Okay, we are in the book of Acts. This is chapter 22. Mm -hmm. Let's do a quick review. We have pretty much every week the book of Acts describes <laughs> the history of the church, and it is written by Luke. So you could say it's Luke part two. Part one is the gospel of Luke. Part two is the book of Acts that he wrote while on his journeys uh, also with Paul as he did a lot of his missionary work. Uh, again, the church is the collective body of believers, and the body of believers were called out of the world into a transformational relationship with God through Jesus Christ. We are transformed mm -hmm. into this relationship. We are, we are, 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 are to become as one with the Spirit of God as he dwells in us. And makes changes in us so that we can do the work of ministry, which is to serve and spread the gospel, to help win souls to the kingdom. That is what we as the body of Christ are supposed to do. And the key elements in the book of Acts are the church and the Holy Spirit. Some people say it's actually the acts of the Holy Spirit. Um, but that's what we're talking about is the birth of the church and how the Holy Spirit come to indwell in man and stay with man. We always know, as you're reading the First Testament, the Holy Spirit would come, infuse a person to do a particular deed or a particular want of God that he wanted men to do. But then once that was done, the Holy Spirit would reascend back into heaven. He did not dwell in man. He was only sent to do a particular uh, uh, a task. But now the Holy Spirit has come and it remains in us, stays yes. with us. And the Holy Spirit's major purpose is to help us live now as witnesses for Christ so that we can do the work, so that we can remember how, you know, what God has done for us. Bring to our remembrance the things we need in order to do the work uh, so that God God gets the glory of not us. Amen. So a quick review of what we did in Acts chapter 21. Uh, 21 was primarily chronicles the events leading up to the end of Paul's third missionary journey from Miletus to his arrival and arrest in Jerusalem. There were, there were 40 verses and had four primary categories, and they were Paul travels from Miletus to Jerusalem. Paul meets with the Jerusalem church. Paul is arrested at the temple. And Paul addresses the Jerusalem mob. So if we had good last week. It's been good. Uh, any questions or any comments on what we went over last week? In chapter 21. Okay, if not, we will continue and go further. This is chapter 22. Uh, and we kind of ended last week with a cliffhanger. Mm -hmm. Paul was he, he was he, he was brought before the crowd, brought before the mob, getting ready to tell what his story was, and it ended. So Acts 22 picks up with Paul addressing the Jerusalem crowd. Again, which is where chapter 21 ended. Uh, uh, 22 has 30 verses, and it only has two primary categories. The first category is Paul's testimony. And that's verses 1 through 21. And then Paul speaks about his heritage. Mm -hmm. That's 22 to 30. So if you're ready, let's begin. This is Paul's testimony, verses 1 through 21. And it starts out, brothers and esteemed fathers, Paul said, listen to me as I offer my defense. When they heard him speaking in their own language, the silence was even greater. Then Paul said, I am a Jew born in Tarsus, a city in Cilicia. And I was brought up and educated here in Jerusalem under Gamaliel. As his student, 
I was carefully trained in our Jewish laws and customs. I became very zealous to honor God in everything I did, just like all of you today. And I persecuted the followers of the way, hounding some to death, arresting both men and women and throwing them in prison. The high priest and the whole These are actually elders because of um, the human Someone the who Someone, please put, your, put, your, uh, uh, put it on mute, please. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, verse 5, the high priest and the whole council of elders could testify that this is so. For I received letters from them to our Jewish brothers in Damascus, authorizing me to bring the followers of the way from there to Jerusalem in chains to be punished. As I was on the road approaching Damascus about noon, a very bright light from heaven suddenly shone down around me. I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? I asked. And the voice replied, I am Jesus the Nazarene, the one you are persecuting. The people with me saw the light but didn't understand the voice speaking to me. I asked, what should I do, Lord? And the Lord told me, get up and go into Damascus. There you will be told everything you are to do. I was blinded by the intense light and had to be led by the hand to Damascus by my companions. A man named Ananias lived there. He was a godly man, deeply devoted or devoted to the law and well regarded by all of the Jews of Damascus. He came and stood beside me and said, Brother Saul, regain your sight. And that very moment, I could see him. Then he told me, the God of our ancestors has chosen you to know his will and to see the righteous one and hear him speak. For you are to be his witness, telling everyone what you have seen and heard. What are you waiting for? Get up and be baptized. <clears throat> Have your sins washed away by calling on the name of the Lord. After I returned to Jerusalem, I was praying in the temple and fell into a trance. I saw a vision of Jesus saying to me, hurry, leave Jerusalem, for the people here won't accept your testimony about me. But Lord, I argued. They certainly know that in every synagogue, I imprisoned and beat those who believed in you. And I was in complete agreement when your witness, Stephen, was killed. I stood by and kept the coats they took off when they stoned him. But the Lord said to me, go, for I will send you far away to the Gentiles. Wow. So this is Paul giving his testimony regarding his conversion. So Paul was open about his past. Verses 1 through 5. It was specific. Paul could recount exactly what happened to him when he received Christ. Paul identified others who helped him after he was saved. And Paul shared what God had called him to do. Any questions? Very, very, very poignant. In giving a he kind of he, he kind of put the guy that uh, helped him regain his sight 
out there. So yes. now people know who he was. And if yes. they're still persecuting Christians, they can come after him now. Yes. I never saw that before. Yes. But what God showed me when you was reading that also, can you imagine Ananias had to tell him what God says, you were killing my people. Yeah. And that showed the love and the forgiveness Christ was right. in Ananias. Right. Yeah, now everybody knows who Ananias is. Yes. Everybody knows who he is. Yes. 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 Okay. Let's talk about this personal. Not only his physical eyes were open, but his spiritual eyes. Ah, exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. The spiritual eyes were open. He was able to, uh, uh, and, and, and it's amazing that he's going down this road. He sees this light, but he doesn't just hear, see the light. He hears the voice. The voice is audible. Yes. Yes. It's audible. And you can look around all you want. You don't see anybody, but you know he's speaking. Mm -hmm. And you hear this voice. Mm -hmm. He's calling you by your name and he's telling mm -hmm. you who he was. There's no doubt. Yes. When Paul Oof. says, who are you? Mm -hmm. I'm Jesus Christ the Nazarene. I'm from Nazareth. I'm the one you persecuted. You're persecuting me now. Yes. By the things you're doing to my my people. The things you're doing to the people who are coming to me, who are uh, being uh, uh, believers in me. And you're, you're persecuting. Mm -hmm. But he did not shirk from giving his testimony. No, he gave it. There he you go. It. So let's he deal did. with personal initial testimony. Um, Here we go. Keep it brief. This is the initial testimony. No more than 90 seconds. You should be able to give a quick testimony within 90 seconds. That's a minute and a half. Without really going into long drawn out in your initial testimony. This is when you are trying to capture someone's attention. Yes. You know, attention spans of people are not long, but you need to be able to give them something in those 90 seconds that's going to cause them to become curious. Mm -hmm. Let them know what was your life before Christ. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go into long, drawn out detail in your initial. But then... What was your life, life, life like since you met Christ? Mm -hmm. And how have you changed? So I can give a, a, a quick brief one with me was, would be, you know, there was a time when uh, I, I did not walk with Christ. I did not know him. I did not uh, uh, care to. I lived a life. Uh, of uh, carefree abandon. Mm -hmm. I did what I wanted to do. Didn't think I hurt anybody. But, you know, I did what I wanted to do. But since I've met Christ, since Christ came into my life, I understood the difference between what I was before and what I am now. And what I am now is a man who loves God. I'm now a man who understands the meaning of salvation. I understand the meaning of love. I understand the meaning of strength. I understand what it says to do what God wants me to do. Boom. I just want to say, I just want to say that uh, when keeping it brief and what was your life like before Christ, don't scam away and you don't have to tell all your intimate business. Not in your That's initial. Not in, not, the in your, not, right. in, not in your initial. But some people, no. I've seen some Christians, they get real deep with their initial. Right. And that right. scares people off or make people say, I don't right. want to be bothered with him. So you have right. to be really led by the Holy Spirit on how you're going to do number exactly. one. Exactly. Michelle exactly. and I went to Michelle and I went to uh, a party. Um, uh, guys, garage was just 
beautiful. I mean, he had it all Three laid out. Garage. Yeah, it was uh, nice. He had kegs of beer and popcorn machine and food and all. And so I go. And because uh, I ain't afraid to go nowhere. You know, you can't catch a fish in the bathtub. Mm -hmm. So we go. We're sitting at the table. And, uh, you know, just casual conversation with people. Nothing, you know, out of the ordinary. Until some, I, and I don't even know how it happened. But somebody and somehow the conversation turned to God. He gave us an opportunity to talk. And we just, you know, we just casually began to open up and tell about, you know, God, how, you know, we're, we're this, we're that, you know, we're blessed, and da, da 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 And it was very casual, very nonchalant. Mm -hmm. But it was enough to where you could see the curiosity yes. in the people that we were talking to. <laughs> so we had opportunity. We could see that, hey, within this short amount of time, we could let them know what we were like before and after. Mm -hmm. And how our life had changed. You know, everybody else was drinking and all what we have. I think we, I think I had like a Sprite or something. And I had, had a Coca-Cola. We still had a Coca-Cola, you know. People were smoking. We weren't smoking. You know, we were just, and they, people could tell we were not drinking. They could tell we were not doing what everyone else did. Before we know, knew it, there was about three or four or five people came to our table. Mm -hmm. And was listening. Yeah, here we go. The next level testimony. So you have your initial where you just lightly begin to open up the door. Then once you know you got them, now comes your next level testimony. Can you be transparent about your past? Mm -hmm. When I say being transparent about your past, you still have to know who you're talking to. Exactly. You know, I let them know, you know, I did, I did, you know, a lot of stuff when I was in the streets. I never told them how much drugs I did. I never told them about running around. I, I didn't go into all that. But I let them know enough. If you ask me a question, I'm going to give you an answer. But I'm going to give you an answer to where you're going to understand where I come from without you getting a more negative thought towards me. Mm -hmm. But enough to let you know I'm no better than anyone else. I've gone through probably what you're going through, what somebody you know has gone through, some hardship, some reality. I can be transparent. But again, you got to know your audience. You got to know who you're talking to. You know, if I'm dealing with a bunch of drug addicts, yeah, I'm going to tell them about how God delivered me from drugs. If I'm dealing with, you know, a, 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 a group of corporate individuals, I'm not telling them about my drug addictions, but I can tell them about the times when I was at certain uh, functions mm -hmm. uh, with other executives, and I may have drank a little too much acted a little bit more like they do, something that's within their realm of understanding. Without that shock in, them. Without shock value. So can you be transparent about your past? You don't have to hide anything, but you need to know who you're talking to. That's you right. Know? I agree do with that. Have, uh, do you have vivid details on how and when you were saved? That I get. Once I know I got you, I can I, I tell you about when I was in my bathroom all by myself. Mm. And God spoke to me in my bathroom by myself. God told me what to do. I did it. He saved me in my bathroom by myself. I heard him talk to me. I had one of them Paul uh, experiences. God spoke to me by myself. And I and he there's things he told me to do and I did them. And I mean, immediately, I mean, he just saved me. I was addicted. The addiction fell from me 
right here, right now. Boom. I didn't have to go through 12 steps. I didn't have to go through, you know, uh, 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 nicotine patches. He took things away from me right here, right now. It was boom. <clears throat> it was in a February. Kids were out of school because we had snowstorm. And I'm just in my bathroom just laughing and praising and hollering and Kids came up and knocked on the door. <laughs> you okay, daddy? I'm fine. I'm fine. I remember all of that. So do the like, kids. You, know, you, you, you want to tell your story about how God changed your life. But still remember who you're talking to and the reason why you're talking to them. After salvation, who has God sent to help you along? Well, I know within me, it was like maybe an hour after God saved me and I'm in my bedroom, I get a call from the pastor of the church that we had been going to. I would get up and go to church with Michelle. Michelle got saved. I was, we, we, we go to church. I get high and go to church with Michelle. I was bold. I didn't care. <clears throat> I didn't care. And this pastor called me on the phone and said, Malcolm, I've been looking for your phone number for an hour, but I couldn't find it. I just found it because God told me to call you and mm -hmm. tell you everything's going to be all right. I lost it. I lost it. Because mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, man, God is real. He is real for, I don't know, hours. That's all that could come out of my mouth was he's real. Yes. God sent this man to call me, to help me understand. That's just like, just like Ananias telling, telling Saul, open up your eyes. You can see. Yes. That's what this pastor did for me. Blew me away. Do you know what God has called you to do? It took a while for me to understand what God was calling me to do. Once he did, and it still came in steps. The first thing he called me to do was to preach and teach. So I, you know, I did that. I became assistant pastor at a church. I was, you know, evangelizing. Sunday school, Sunday school superintendent. Sunday school teacher, Sunday school superintendent. There's certain things that he had me to do until he finally called me the pastor. So, you know, you need to know what God has called. God has called each of us to do something. Man. Specific. You didn't yeah. get saved just to That's sit right. down on your laurels. Hey! And be happy that you saved. You got a job to do. Amen. Everyone does. I say there are two wills. There's one will that is for the entire body of Christ. Everybody is supposed to do this. But then there's one will that's got your specific name on it. God mm -hmm. has got a will for you, for you to do, and you must do it. If you don't know what it is, it's high time that you begin to really seek God. Mm -hmm. And ask him, Father, what is it that you want? You, you, you saved me for a purpose, not just to deliver me from sin. Mm. There's something you want me to do. What do you want me to do? I'll mm. do it. Amen. So these are your testimonies. When, when, when In Acts 1 and 8, when it talks about you receive power after that, the Holy Spirit has come upon you. But then it goes on to say, you will be my witnesses. That is what it is. That's your testimony, is your witness of Christ in your life. That's why the Holy Spirit is so important to give you the power to do that, to tell others about the goodness of the Lord in your life, what you used to be able to do. Now what you can do. Amen. This is what Paul did. He was very, very poignant about telling exactly what it was. He was very transparent. I used to send men and women to prison some I killed. He got down to the point to where I even held the coats of those that threw rocks at Stephen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was a coat rack. I was happy to do it. 
Why they killed this yeah. dude? <sighs> That's deep. Excuse me. Any questions on one through twenty one? Okay. This is the that was second. Good. This is twenty two to thirty. This is it. This is Paul's heritage. So the crowd listened until Paul said that word. Then they all began to shout, away with such a fellow. He isn't fit to live. They yelled, threw off their coats, and tossed handfuls of dust into the air. The commander brought Paul inside and ordered him, ordered him lashed with whips to make him confess his crime. He wanted to find out why the crowd had become so furious. Time will stop. Paul told he's speaking to Jews. He's speaking to the crowd, letting them know how bad a man he was, mm -hmm. what he did to people. Mm -hmm. What a confession. Mm -hmm. I did this, I did that, same way with you. I did this to you, your type of people. And they just lost it. He isn't fit to live. Let's kill this dude. How dare he? The same people that he killed, now he's spreading the gospel. He's Now he's talking about this Christ. He's telling people about salvation. He's spreading the same word of the people he killed. Oh, we can't have this. Let's kill this man. When they tied Paul down to lash him, Paul said to the officer standing there, is it legal for you to whip a Roman citizen who hasn't even been tried? When the officer heard this, he went to the commander and asked, what are you doing? This man is a Roman citizen. So the commander went over and asked Paul, tell me, are you a Roman citizen? Yes, I certainly am, Paul replied. I am too, the commander muttered, and it costs me plenty. Paul answered, but I am a citizen by birth. Ah, the soldiers who were about to interrogate Paul quickly withdrew when they heard he was a Roman citizen. But the commander was frightened because he had ordered him bound and whipped. The next day, the commander ordered the leading priest into session with the Jewish high council. He wanted to find out what the trouble was all about so he released Paul to have him stand before them. You see, it was against Roman law to punish any Roman without a trial. He had this person had to be found guilty. This is where we get ours. You're innocent until you are proven guilty. This is how the Romans set up everything. You could do anything to anybody else, but if you were a Roman citizen, the laws applied to you. So when Paul let them know, hey, I'm a Jew, but I'm also a Roman. And I was born this way. You see, when the commander says it cost me a pretty penny, you could buy your way into citizenship mm -hmm. if you weren't born a Roman. There were certain steps you had to, to, to uh, do to become a citizen. Same way it is in coming into uh, citizenship with the United States. There's study you have to do. There's tests you have to take. Now you're going to start paying taxes when you become to become a citizen. This is what it was for Romans. But if you're born here. You're born a citizen. Same way it was with Paul. So they had to, they they were getting scared then. Oh man, we we getting ready to do something that's against our Roman policy. 
we can't just beat this guy. We can't just arrest this man. We can't put him in anything. We have to go through the processes that are deemed necessary for us. So they release Paul to have him stand before the priest and the Jewish high council. So to share this testimony, many Jews still refused to believe Paul. They didn't want to believe him. They sent him back to the barracks to have him beat. Paul asked one of the guards, was it lawful to do this to a Roman citizen? When they all realized that Paul was a Jew, but also a Roman citizen, they let him go. Key point. Everything changed when they realized that Paul was more than what they thought he was. It happens all the time. It's so amazing that we look at people today. I'm, I'm One thing I am noticing, and I don't have a problem, but I'm noticing the amount that I see today. That's with tattoos. I've, I've, I I know some sweetly say people got tattoos. Hey, you got tattoos? That's fine. You know, I mean, that's something that was part of your life probably before. I ain't, and I don't think God's telling you go and have your tattoo removed unless it is something very vulgar and something that everyone will see and something that goes against Christ. That's a whole different story. But I've seen, you know, a lot of tattoos. What I'm seeing more now is a lot of people wearing tattoos, so especially these face tattoos. I don't understand the face tattoos. Those are ones that really tend to annoy me. But if a person comes in, you got tats all over, I cannot assume that you are not a Christian. Amen. Open up your mouth. Start talking to me. Let me get a chance to get to know who you are. I can't make a judgment. See, people will do that, but once they get to know who you are, things are going to change. They're not who you think they are. Exactly. That's what happened with Paul. He was persecuting you and God changed him. He changed to, him right now. To, yes. And he was a very educated Roman. Extremely person. educated. Highly educated. He knew all about Jewish law. He knew all about the Jewish law, yeah. about procedures and processes. What he also knew. He also knew Roman law and Roman. He knew life. Roman law because so he, he was born a Roman. citizen, so he had that dual duality going he on. Yeah, that duality within him. He was not. He was no dummy. He, no. he was a. He was a. He was a, he was a blue collar worker with a yeah. high degree yeah. of education because he was a tent maker. He worked yeah. with his hands, but he was highly educated. Very educated. Very very up on all of pomp and circumstance of being a highly educated Jew and a Roman citizen. Any questions? I told you guys, this is short because it's just these two. And so um, closing thoughts. Paul shares his testimony three different times in Acts, but to different audiences. You should be able to adjust our testimony based on who we're talking to. I said that earlier. We have to adjust how we give our yeah. testimony based on who we're talking to. You got to know your audience. And, and see, that comes with the Spirit of God giving you opportune time. Michelle says it best, Holy Ghost moments. Mm -hmm. To know when it's best to begin to share Christ in the way that you know they're going to receive it. I know of people who, there's an old adage that goes, that goes they're so heavenly bound, they're no earthly good. Because mm. they talk so much high, high Christianity, throwing out a lot of scripture, you know, all that, uh, and they're talking to common people 
who whose stuff is way over their head. They don't care about they don't care about that. That's why I say all the time, people don't care about Paul. They don't care about Joseph. They don't care about Moses. They don't care about David. They care about you. And so what is your testimony? Said, we talk too much. Mm -hmm. We talk too much. But we also Way too need much. to be able to too talk much. and give the right thing. Yep. Making quick assumptions about others can be dangerous. You should take the, some time to know people better before making any final conclusions, especially the people that don't fit our mold. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, you can't just put everybody in the same category. That's right. Because they're not. And that's especially true now when people assume, oh, all black people are like this. Oh, right. all white people are like this. Right. Oh, all Muslims are like this. The right. Chinese are like this. And right. so one thing pastor always says to me, so you know every Chinese? You know all, you know everyone? <laughs> right. No, you know I don't more? know. No, you don't know them all. Hmm. You don't. Hmm. So hmm. watch what you say and how you say it, but know who you're talking to. Don't be ashamed mm -hmm. to spread the gospel and tell your story. That's right. Tell your story in the way that people can receive it understand it and then operate with them mm -hmm. that's how you win so the bible says that they that win in souls must be oh, wise nice. you gotta know what to say when to say it and who to say it to and who to say it to amen you gotta be that fisherman you gotta you know, know what to say it on you gotta know the right bait you gotta know yep. the right time yep. to go fishing you have to be patient. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then you have to make sure that you don't cook the fish before you get it on the hook. <laughs> Amen. This is what we're talking about. Paul yeah. is just beginning to tell his story. Yes. All this time, through all his missionary journeys, he's been talking about Christ. He's been getting people to believe the Holy Spirit is here for them. He's been speaking about the glories of God. Glory to glory. Now he's at a place to where people want to hear about him. Because mm -hmm. they're seeing a whole different side. A lot of people have heard about him, but now they see him. And they understand he's talking this stuff about this God, but Weren't you the one that did such and such and such and such? He's like, yep, I'm the one that did it. I did this, I did that, I did this, and I did that. I'm not ashamed to tell you about my past. But now let's get down into the meat of it. The most common people were ready to kill him. But now he has to go in front of high councils, priests, those of authority who have the ability to pass judgment on him and cause his life to be changed forever. All, it was given, prophecy was given to Paul. Don't go to Jerusalem, they're going to kill you. Paul mm -hmm. even said himself, I'm getting ready to go and I'm going to have to suffer this, this, this. You're not going to see me anymore. Paul knew he was going into a place to where his life was going to now become Subject in the beginning, the, the, the exactly. soldier was trying to protect Paul. If you yes, remember, last week we saw that the soldier was yes. trying to protect him. Yes, that's why he, he, he actually why he arrested him, pulled him away right. from the crowd. Yep, but then when Paul was very adamant about addressing the crowd, mm -hmm. he turned yeah. and he started to address him, and this is what he said. Mm -hmm. And they just really went off. Oh, now let's just let's not just arrest. That doesn't mean he's not even fit to live. Mm -hmm. He needs to die. Mm -hmm. So the first thing they did was take him and let's go beat him first. Mm -hmm. Sound okay. like Jesus, don't it? Yep, sound like Jesus. But they couldn't, they couldn't touch him. Because mm -hmm. of him being a Roman citizen, they couldn't touch him. 
until those in authority gave the order. Yes. So, more cliffhangers here. <laughs> this next week is going to be the Book of Acts, chapter part 23. 